I found this on the street a few blocks from my house. It used to be a bass guitar. Someone has stripped it of all of its hardware. No pickups, no bridge, no tailpiece. It's missing one of its tuners. It feels like the universe is assigning me a project. And quite frankly, I couldn't stop myself from working on it, even if I wanted to. My first order of business is to find some screws and attach the neck. This box of screws comes from Ikea, and it's amazing how often I've made use of it. Okay, at least it looks like a musical instrument now. Next, we need to buy some parts. But before we can do that, we need to know more about this model and what it's supposed to look like. So the first piece of information we have is the brand name, Coral. In terms of shape, what comes to mind most is the famous Hofner bass that Paul McCartney plays. Although, when I look at photos of that, it actually looks pretty different. For one thing, this has F-holes, whereas his doesn't. Either way, it seems that basses that have this shape with sort of violin-style cutouts are called violin basses. By the way, the cutouts are actually called bouts. Anyway, I'm going to search for Coral Violin Bass. Okay, this looks promising. I'm going to click through to the website. Okay, here is the instrument in question. It's nice that there's even a high-res photo so I can really see what it's supposed to look like. As you can see, I've got my work cut out for me. Back on that website, I can see that they've labeled it Coral Fiddle Bass. So I try searching for that, and I come up with this, a catalog from the Coral Company. And what do you know, here it is. So this instrument was, in fact, called the Fiddle Bass. It was made in either 1968 or 1969. Even though I know the name now, I can see that this guitar is actually pretty rare because there are none on eBay, there are none on Reverb. I'm not really sure how I'm going to locate parts. Of course, I did learn one other thing from that catalog. Coral is the same company as Dan Electro. I'm going to try to order Dan Electro parts and hopefully they'll fit. Okay, four weeks have passed. My budget guitar parts have all arrived from China. I got some pickups, a bridge, and a tailpiece. I went with the cheapest version of everything, because I don't even know if there's a viable instrument. Let's start with the pickups. Almost all Dan Electro guitars feature these chrome lipstick pickups. It's kind of a signature detail. Installing these is pretty simple. The hardest part is figuring out a way to hold the pickup in place while I screw the screws in. There's a big hole at the end of the body where the output jack is supposed to be. I think the inside of this kind of looks like the hold of a pirate ship. Well, anyway, eventually I discovered that I can actually stick something like a drumstick through that hole and use it to hold up the pickup while I'm screwing it in. You may have noticed I've soldered a little quarter inch jack to the pickups. The plan right now is to have two outputs, one for each pickup. I'm not going to bother with knobs or wiring until I at least know that the pickups work. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to move on to the tailpiece. This should be pretty easy, it's basically just screwing it into the end of the body. This is what it looks like once it's been mounted. So the final piece is the bridge. But the bridge is actually held in place by the string tension, so we can't put the bridge on until we've got at least one string on it. Now that I've got the E string on, I'm going to see if I can't just slide the bridge underneath it. I'm realizing now that the bridge I bought is actually too tall relative to the pickup height. I think my solution is going to be to only use the top half of the bridge. I've got it sitting on top of these little bits of wood. Okay, time to put some more strings on it. Okay, so something bad just happened. While I was tightening that string, the neck, which is solidly screwed into the body, moved. As you can see, the string is really far away from the fretboard now. It should be about that high. I have no choice but to take the string off, take the neck off, and investigate. Okay, so here's what I found. This block of wood is what the neck connects to, and there's a crack where the block of wood connects to the body. I bet this is why I got thrown out. I may be just out of luck here. My only hope is to try to glue it. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Yesterday, I dumped about half a bottle of wood glue into this thing. I clamped it and left it overnight. Let's put the instrument back together and see how strong this glue really is. Put those strings back on it.
So far, the neck seems super stable. I swear this isn't an ad for tight bond wood glue. Okay, I think it's finally time to try this thing out. So yeah, the pickups sound pretty good. Because I've got two outputs, I'm actually recording both pickups separately. Let's do a quick comparison. This is the neck pickup. And this is the bridge pickup. And this is what it sounds like in the room. It's kind of funny. Since the body is way too small to actually resonate at those low bass frequencies, all you get is the boxy top end. That being said, when you listen to the pickups, I feel like the resonance from the box does actually translate into a warmer sound overall. While I was waiting for my parts to arrive, I did a bunch of research about the instrument. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Dan Electro Company. They make these iconic guitars with a very distinctive mid-century modern look. So anyway, the Dan Electro that exists now is actually a reboot. The original company was started in 1947 by this guy, and it actually went out of business in 1969, which means that this catalog and this guitar are actually from the very last years of that company's existence. At the time, Dan Electro was based in Neptune City, New Jersey, and when I read that, I got super excited. I imagined that a part of this video would be me driving over the bridge to New Jersey to find the specific abandoned factory where my instrument was made. By the way, I believe this is the actual building, except the body of my guitar wasn't made there. According to this website, all of the hollow bodies were actually made in Japan. And sure enough, it actually says made in Japan right on the back. Seems a bit far for a road trip. In a second, I want to try to use this thing to record a song. But before I do, there's one more question I have to answer. Can this be used as a cello? I'm gonna grab my cello bow. I've set the bass on top of a very rickety table. Now all I have to do is bow across it. Whoa, that's pretty intense. It's not a beautiful sound, but I could definitely see it being used for like scoring a horror film. I'm gonna have to do some more experiments with this sound. But in the meantime, let's try to use this thing for its intended purpose as a bass guitar. So I have this song that I've been meaning to finish for ages. If you saw my blue guitar video, you may remember that that video ended with me singing a chorus. And I printed something on the screen asking people if it was worth my finishing the song. Well, a bunch of people thought it was, so I really do want to finish it, but I just haven't come up with the right verse for it. All I know is that the tempo has to be 128 beats per minute. I've got a sort of generic rock beat going right now, and I'm just going to try to come up with a chord progression to go on top of it. That seems pretty serviceable. Before I try to sing anything over it, I'm gonna record the same thing an octave up on the guitar. Maybe I'll add an acoustic too. Okay, time for vocals. It turns out that that verse fits really nicely with the chorus. I ended up finishing the song, and you can hear the whole thing over at Bandcamp. All in all, I'm really liking this bass. Not only did it give me the push I needed to actually finish the song, but it has a warm, pleasantly muted sound that's different from any of the other bass instruments in my studio. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could give it a like. Also, if you haven't done so already, now is a great time to subscribe. I've got a lot of fun videos on the way. Of course, it should surprise absolutely no one that I have sampled the choral bass guitar. It's now a decent sampler library that is available to patrons. 
Speaking of which, the Patreon is just five bucks, and every month you get an exclusive sample library just for patrons. There have been a ton so far. Okay, I think that's it. Here's a little bit more of that song. <laughs> 